So between you and me, I can't wait until we get the Alex Mercer versus Cole McGrath fight. And believe me when I say that I am going to make a video about it whenever it comes out. Eventually. Hello and welcome. This is Faceless Opinion and it is time for a death battle. Welcome you back to another video. So the time has finally come. We finally got the long-awaited Cole McGrath versus Alex Mercer matchup. Infamous versus Prototype. Something that so many people have been wanting for years. Did it live up to the hype though? I would say so. It was a very solid episode. Spoiler warning, Cole won. And as an infamous fan, this makes me happy. Honestly, going into this, I had no idea who was going to win. In the past, I would have said Alex would have won and it would have been a stomp. But as I have gotten older and learned more about power scaling, as well as looking more into Cole's accomplishments, it made me change my way of thinking and that this matchup could go any way. Now, with all of that said, is this a flawless episode with no issues whatsoever? No. I do have some stuff I want to point out and discuss. As mentioned earlier, I am an Infamous fan and will more often than not talk about the stuff pertaining to Infamous. However, I have played the prototype games before and have some knowledge about it. Not as much as I do regarding Infamous, but enough to acknowledge certain things. Now, with that out of the way, let me talk about some of the things I have issues with. But first things first, I actually want to give credit to Death Battle and thank them for only focusing on good karma Cole and not doing a composite of him, such as having him have all his evil karma abilities such as Napalm or the powers of the beast. That would not have been a fair fight. Believe me when I say that evil Cole is a menace. However, that isn't the only thing that Cole has going for him, as during the Festival of Blood DLC, which is non-canon by the way, Cole becomes a vampire and gains new vampiric abilities. Or, if they decide to factor in scaling and feats that Cole has from PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Man, I haven't thought about that game in a long time. Has anyone remembered that game? Sorry, I got sidetracked. Like I said, I am glad that they didn't do a composite. I like an even playing field when it comes to versus battles. Now, let me start off with some minor nitpicks. Cole is not known as the savior of Empire City. He's actually called the demon of Empire City, as that was a derogatory term used by Joseph Bertrand in Infamous 2 to, no pun intended, demonize Cole. Under the power section for what Cole can do, they have Arc Lightning listed, and that is incorrect as Arc Lightning is exclusively an evil karma power. And since this is good karma Cole, he does not have that. One thing I want to mention on the prototype side of things is why do they have Peter Randall on the list of people that Alex defeated? He is an old general with one arm. He did not provide any type of challenge compared to the others on that list such as Specialist Crossed, Elizabeth Green, and the Supreme Hunter. I don't recall having a fight with him. Just saying. Rails like Shadow the Hedgehog. Read your mind like Goku's muffin button. Charge up with extra karmic energy. Also like Shadow the Hedgehog. And generate force fields like Shadow the Hedgehog being the ultimate being. Oh, oh, like Shadow the Hedgehog. By Why do they keep mentioning Shadow the Hedgehog? For real, they said his name four times. What is this, supposed to be a hint telling us that Shadow is going to be in a future death battle? His fourth death battle? Coincidence? I think not! Yeah, that's no coincidence. Now, one thing that I felt like was kind of glossed over would be them talking about the Beast, as they didn't really go that detailed into it. The Beast, just like Alex, survived a nuclear blast. The only difference being that Alex was trying to escape his nuke, while the Beast was hit directly with it and recovered from it in a matter of moments. Then fast forward to the Beast in Cole's second fight, Cole bullies the Beast, the same beast who took a nuke to the face. And that is only factoring the durability and regenerative capabilities of the beast. That's not talking about actual destructive power, as the beast was able to destroy Empire City like it was nothing, but also devastate the entire eastern seaboard as well, marching its way to Numeray. So basically, to give a real world comparison, a path of destruction from New York City to New Orleans. I could keep going, about what the beast can still do, 
but I think you get the point I'm trying to make. Good idea. Let's talk about the ending of the fight, where Cole uses Bioleach on Alex. I am very iffy about this, as I'm not quite sure if Bioleach would work on Alex, since he is more virus than man. But yet again, he is a living being and would have neuroelectric energy. Then you have the pop-up in the corner that say that Bioleach could negate Alex's regeneration. Which, yet again, I am skeptical about. If someone can make sense of this on whether Bioleach would work on Alex or not, let me know because I honestly have no clue. Personally, I would have liked to have seen the matchup end with Cole bringing down an Ionic Storm and wiping out Alex. Like that. But it's not that big of a deal, so it is what it is. Or how he resisted Sasha's mind control powers, which were eerily similar to the Black Light Virus. I take issue with them saying that Sasha's tar and the Black Light Virus are similar. Sure, they may have some things in common, but to say that those similarities mean that Cole can resist the Black Light Virus is a bit of a stretch, as her black tar functions to that more of a drug than a proper disease, as exposure to it results in hallucinations and sickness, which Sasha uses to mind control her reapers, which is why they are always shown trying to pollute the water supply with her sludge. Now, if you're trying to make the argument that Cole can resist or is immune to the black light virus, a better argument that can be made is comparing the black light virus to the race fear plague, as conduits, whose conduit genes are activated, become immune to the plague. That could be a possibility. However, during the results page, it says that Cole can resist the black light virus, however, he is vulnerable to corruption. What does that mean exactly? Does that mean he can be affected by the virus or not? Giving off mixed signals and I request clarification. And with that, I feel like I don't have anything else to say. To be honest, there weren't that many issues with this episode. It was well researched. Granted, I do have some questions, but nothing that I would consider egregious. I am glad that this episode was finally made as it gives both Infamous and Prototype some much needed recognition that I'm sure it hasn't gotten in years. Something that fans on both sides of the aisle would be happy about, regardless of who really won. Hopefully, this will open the door to future matchups, whether that be against each other or different franchises. It does not matter. I am going to link both the episode and the music for it in the description so you can check it out. Now tell me what you think. What do you think of the matchup? Who do you think should have won? Who do you think would win in a fight between Delson Rowe and James Heller? Tell me in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.